OK. Uh, good morning, and welcome once again. <laughs> right, so uh, this course is uh, called Holiness. Um, BC209 is the course code. Um, this course was started approximately uh, two years ago, um, like two semesters, yeah, two years ago. In 2022, it's when it was started. Um, and the origins of the course, uh, this course and why it was started by Pastor Ashish was, uh, so uh, there was a leaders conference and a pastors conference that was happening, which was hosted by another ministry. And uh, there came, and it was for leaders and pastors. Uh, very specifically um, and uh, and so there were a lot of questions regarding uh, holiness uh, how to live a holy life um, how do I overcome temptations challenges um, repentance was a huge question that that was a recurring question right um, and so I mean, if if all these questions were coming from leaders and uh, pastors and all of that, and so pastors thought, um, Pastor Ashish thought, it would be very good for, to equip our students here at BC uh, with, regarding living a life of personal holiness and um, and overcoming challenges and and whatnot, right? So once you are equipped here, it's uh, you're not only equipped to live a holy life, you will also be able to equip everybody else, um, isn't it? So, um, hence that's the uh, origin of this uh, uh, course. Um, I hope you uh, you all here in the class have your hard copies. Um, and uh, online, I hope you were able to download the PDFs, and save it. Okay. Um, so there are four primary documents. Um, one is just a course overview, and one is the document called Holiness, and uh, part one and part two of Repentance. And then and the last document is overcoming uh, temptations, et cetera. OK. All right, all good. So should we get started? Yeah, yeah. What, what? Yes. Oh, yes. OK. Yeah. Let's pray and submit. Um, Father, we submit uh, this course into your hands. Um, Lord, our, our minds. Lord, we surrender it all to you, uh, Lord. Uh, you are our teacher. We humble ourselves before you. Um, so even as we begin this journey of uh, learning and, and understanding about your holiness and how we can be empowered and live a holy life as you commanded us to be, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would empower us, Lord, and help us understand uh, your word. Breathe your breath over your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Okay, so uh, this, this subject, uh, this topic, I should say, in many ways is also very special um, to me. When I say special is uh, um, one of my early encounters with the Lord. What I remember was um, when I was in sixth standard, I think, sixth standard, uh, is I remember having breakfast, getting ready to go to school with, uh, you know, just before middle school, you, it was just those half pants, <laughs> uh, you know, and um, and back then uh, there was this uh, channel called, uh, I think it was not, we didn't have Got TV back then, uh, it was something called TBN, and. Uh, TBN network, a miracle network, something. If you, you remember, okay, uh, we will remember. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and at eight o'clock, from eight to eight a.m. to eight thirty was uh, Benny Hinn's program it would be telecasted on TV, and uh, so I was having my breakfast uh, with my uniform, and you know, and uh, just watching this program this starting and uh, his crusade starting and then there was this worship leader called uh, terry mccallman um powerful beautiful worship leader he's the one who wrote you deserve the glory uh yeah and and so many more others beautiful classics uh it just it's just beautiful you have to listen to his albums when you can um and there was this one song that he had written called the sound of heaven 
I run like, can you hear the sound of heaven, sound of many waters? Okay. And the chorus is simply saying, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Um, right? So that was just the chorus. And um, and as the song was being, you know, sung and worshipped, I, I could just feel the atmosphere change in the room, it, the, the, something tangible. And now at this age, I can use the words like atmosphere and tangible and whatnot. Back then, I didn't know what was happening. I couldn't understand or fathom what was happening. But I, all I knew was that moment was very holy. That's all I knew. That that moment was very holy. Uh, my physical man, I felt like you know, I'm sitting and having my breakfast, but then my spirit man was like, you know, humble and you know was bowing down. I knew that, and it, it was my spirit was immediately responding to the worship that was happening and responding to the presence that was there. Um, and all I knew was, okay, what's happening? That was my question. And I knew there was something holy in that moment. And uh, and that is really the beginning of my first encounter with the holiness of God, is trying to understand. And you know, much later with all the other experiences and teachings and other encounters, uh, I, I can now understand, OK, what that was back then. right? And then moving on, I've, I've been privileged to have people in my life Who've emphasized uh, holiness? Uh, holiness, not just in the sense of purity, which we will learn in just a bit, um, but emphasizing on the holiness of God. And this is something that you can't grasp or fathom immediately. And you, you can never. It's uh, We are talking about an eternal being. We, even those two words, eternal being, I know it kind of makes sense in English, but we can't fathom it because we don't know what eternity is. You know, you're sure you can go to dictionary and look for the word eternity and it might give us certain things. And it, even then it would, <laughs> I'm not sure it would be satisfactory, uh, so to speak. So when we, and I was very privileged to have a worship pastor who emphasized on the holiness of God back then with the word of God and uh, other mentors and people in my life who who would just pursue uh, you know a holiness so that uh, you know they could uh, um, yeah something about it yeah and then there was this one season i'm sorry i'm just sharing my personal uh, experiences and so, you know where i can bring it and align with the course that we are on uh, most of you know that I was part of a worship band, a uh, Christian band called Living Waters. Uh, I used to play the drums. And um, so 2009 and 2010, um, so God was taking us as a group on a, uh, you know, our prayer was, what next, Lord? So I remember February of 2009, uh, the six of us, we just took on a, off on a prayer trip to Velour uh, just to spend some time seeking the Lord and praying Him, uh, praying, uh, you know, and um, you know, God was again through different individuals. He would speak about holiness, and then uh, we were just worshiping. And then, uh, and the songs that we worshipped in those two days over there, up in the hills in the Velour, that song list did not change for like a year and a half. Everywhere we went to lead worship, it was about "I enter the holy of holies, take me past the outer courts." Um, you know, it's it was all about pursuing his presence, going into his presence, not being satisfied in the outer courts. Um, and so that way, the journey has been, um, I should say, I was very privileged to have that journey with the other people that I know of, very honored. And um, and so this, hence, the topic is 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 very special. Um, it, you know, that not because I know everything about it. I don't think I'll ever know everything about it. <laughs> But um, something about this topic draws me to him, you know. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's about this topic. Um, so in in the course overview, what we will cover it has three simple sections. 
right? This course has three simple sections. Um, so for us to live a holy life, for us to live a, a life of personal holiness, we need to understand the holiness of God. Try to understand, uh, some understand, have some sort of an understanding of the God that we worship. Right? The reason that you and I are here is Jesus. Who is he? Right? Yeah, he is holy. What more can we learn about him? Right? Um, so section one, we will learn about the holiness of God um, and his holiness in me. Um, and perfecting holiness and why personal holiness and in the in the beauty of holiness. Okay, so that's what section one is all about. Uh, just understanding who he is and his desire for us to be holy like him uh, as he is. Um, and section two is about repentance, recovery, restoration. Um, and so, you know, there there is time in life where we fall, where we backslide where we sin okay as a christian um you know the minute that I, I give my heart to jesus and say lord you're my come and be uh, my personal lord and savior as as soon as i make the sinner's prayer i am saved from the state of sin right i am saved from the state of sin at that moment i have eternal life why because my spirit is back with him i have invited him back into my heart Right? At that moment, I have eternal life. So the minute I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I am saved from the state of sin. However, I can still commit the, I have the capacity to commit the acts of sin. What are the, uh, because I'm still living in this body, this physical body, right? Galatians 5, 19 to 21, uh, it talks about the acts of sin, um, murder, adultery, fornication, etc., etc., and all of that, right? Um, so, Understanding his holiness and in that journey, how can we live a personal holy life? So, and then how can we recover from a you know sinful life if we've backslidden? Repentance, recovery, restoration. Repentance is not a very popular topic. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's actually a doctrine in itself, and there's a very different understanding of what repentance is. And so, we'll try and understand what that is. And finally, overcoming the flesh. Okay, so these are very three simple uh, uh, sections that we will look at in this course. All good? Yes. Okay. All fine. Francis, Ria. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's look at the introduction. <clears throat> at the in introduction, if you look at, there's one line that starts off by saying, uh, God is holy. Holiness is the very nature of God. Okay. Holiness is the very nature of God. Um, Holiness is God revealing and expressing His beauty. Uh, holiness is His absolute purity, sinlessness, righteousness, truthfulness, faithfulness, and perfection. God's holiness is infinite, perfect, absolute, unattainable, fearful, unapproachable, and beyond what we can grasp. So if it's something beyond what we can grasp, why are we trying to grasp it? Right. So in the journey, we can find something, isn't it? Um, right. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying something. Nino. Okay. <laughs> right. Our words can never sufficiently describe his holiness. Then why are we trying to describe it with our words? Okay. It's something that words cannot define and describe his um, it enough. So here's the thing, right? Um, Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Um, holiness. What is your understanding of holiness? You can pass the mic on, and then yeah. Set apartness. Okay. Set apart. Is like purified without sin. 
purified without sin all right thank you francis um, pure pure okay pure purified without sin unimaginable uh, pureness and that what we that what we discussed here that mm -hmm. we can't grasp we couldn't do in uh, explain in our words okay so um very quickly um yeah great then let's leave aside the holiness of god for a minute and let's just say uh, what do you understand by holiness yeah yeah when you hear the word not just for you but when you hear the word holiness what does it stand in, for what does a, it mean in to you purity in a purity okay uh, anyone online i will pass the mic back to sri radha okay uh Okay. Like, uh, sinless, spotless, pure, completely. Yeah, okay. All right. Sinless, spotless, pure. Okay. Sinless, spotless, in a purity. Okay. All right. Uh, those online and anyone want to share anything? Being set apart by God for God. Okay. Everything is right, guys. I I think we're going to finish this course in a one month's time or something. You know, <laughs> like uh, you all, you all don't need any teaching on this. Well, no assessments, nothing. <laughs> right, something divine. Okay. Yeah. So. And everything is what you said is right, you know. Um, and I've asked this question to a lot of people. Um, oh boy. What happened? The? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've asked this question to a lot of young people, a lot of people um, on the same thing. Okay, what does holiness mean to you, etc.? And the response has always been the same, if not similar. Um, it and and most of it, uh, except for um, responses like set apart and whatnot, it, it is it it points towards this thing called moral purity, M moral purity or righteousness, like like you said, sinlessness, spotless, right? So holiness is okay. If I don't commit murder, if I don't commit adultery, if I don't commit, uh, if I don't steal anything, um, if I don't watch uh, any um, movies that I'm not supposed to be watching, uh, if I don't do uh, uh, the acts of sin that doesn't defile my body, um, <clears throat> if I'm if I'm not jealous, if I'm not greedy, if I'm not you know, I'm, if I'm not a glutton. Gluttony is a sin. Uh, you know? um, so all of that, those are all the acts of sin, sinlessness. Right? That's so. Uh, which is, it's all fine. Absolutely, isn't? Then that's our understanding of it. Um, okay, and uh, Nina has just mentioned something, which are being whole, no conflict between the inside and the outside. Yes. Okay, and for a long time, that was also my understanding, because uh, again, I was raised in a Pentecostal family, right? Uh, and and uh, yeah, and going to a Pentecostal church and whatnot, you, you can imagine the. Um, I'm 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 not sure how many of you uh, were raised in a IPC or CPM kind of a thing. Um, Beard, sin. Piercing, bad boy. Uh, right, long hair. <laughs> you're crucified. You know, uh, jewelry will stone you. Um, you know, that was the kind. Real, literally, that was. Uh, and then white and white, holy. Black and white, <laughs> fifty-fifty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <laughs> white shirt, white pant. Oh, what an angel! It's uh, it's like Angel Gabriel is right in front of us. I will believe whatever you say. You know, it's uh, uh, and look at you. You know, it's like uh, so we we have reduced. When I say we, I'm talking about the whole mankind. 
uh, or let's say Christian for that matter, we have reduced holiness to mere cosmetics. Cosmetics, cosmetics, like makeup, like basically, you know, out, outward things. So um, I, I understand the outward appearance is the reflection of the inward, uh, you know, thing and all of that. But but I I don't think Jesus died on the cross so that you and I can have a dress code. <laughs> yeah, right. So, and but that's what we our understanding of holiness has been. Um, you and I are not saved by acts, isn't it? You and I are not saved by acts. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Our righteousness, our good works, are nothing but filthy rags. He is our righteousness. Jesus is our righteousness. Right? It is in him that we are complete. OK? Um, so when we say God is holy, the Hebrew word for holy is kadosh. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Literally means to be cut off. That's the literal root meaning of it, to be cut off. And then the words like set apart came. Set apart. You're taking this, keeping it set apart, right? When you're cutting any vegetables in the kitchen, what, what do you do? Things that you need, cut it, you set it apart. Isn't it? And so when we say that God is holy, we are not just talking or saying that he doesn't sin. He cannot sin. When we say that God is holy, we are not just saying that he is sinless. He is. Uh, there are uh, other scholars who would say that the holiness of God is his otherness. It's a very deep theological thing. It's his otherness, the otherness of God. Um, it's, there is. There is no one like him. There is nothing like him. When we say that he is holy, we are talking about the person of God. It is who he is. He is holy. right? And that's the beginning of his response to Moses. I am. Right? And in that, everything else is fulfilled. And it is when the world doesn't understand or has understood his holiness, we have questions like, if God is uh, loving, if God is good, why is there evil in the world? Right? If, uh, and it's because in his holiness, he is gracious. In his holiness, he is merciful. In his holiness, he is faithful. In his holiness, he cannot lie. In uh, Psalm 89, uh, verse 35, I think it says, um, you know, because of my holiness, I cannot lie. You know, and last I think last Sunday, there was a sermon on taking God at his word. And one of the points was that he cannot lie. He is not man that he should lie. That means it's implying that man lies. <laughs> it's, it's making two points, right? It's saying that God doesn't, God cannot lie, and it's also saying that man lies. So if if he, if he has to say that, um, so he is set apart. He is. Uh, there's this beautiful scripture um, in Exodus fifteen eleven. It says, "Who among the gods is like you?" Exodus chapter fifteen verse eleven. Who among the gods is like you? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness. It awesome in glory, working wonders. It's a rhetorical question. Like, who is like you? There is no one like you, basically. That's the, you know, that's what a rhetorical question is. Uh, you again see God asking Isaiah in uh, Isaiah chapter 40, uh, to who uh, will you compare me? Or who is my equal? See, those are like a rhetorical question. It's like, there is no one like me. There is no one you can compare me to. 
lift up your eyes and see the starry host who made all of these because of his great power and might not one of them is missing he calls them each by name this you know um god's having this conversation with isaiah in isaiah 40 right so god has most often in in the bible he's used the tangible to explain the intangible okay he's used the tabernacle of moses which is tangible to explain the intangible the his courtroom his throne room right um and so and again we we know that it's impossible uh, to completely describe his holiness in words but let's just, just for for us to understand the intangible let's use an intangible you take a diamond a beautiful how, how many carat can a diamond be i have no idea about diamond diamonds yeah. 100 uh. carat what's like the purest form of diamonds anybody carat or the purity of it okay whatever like the best okay let's say take the kohinoor diamond um right so and it has all these fine cuts right uh, it has these beautiful fine cuts you take it and you uh, lift it up to the light and just like a reflection that would uh, 28 okay awesome thanks anthony 28 <laughs> okay so uh yeah you lift it up to the light and you can you can just see the reflections that will you know that the when the light passes through the diamond and you know pushes off like a prism kind of a thing you know it, it will be just beautiful isn't it and so and you will not know where to look at which part to look at right and explaining his holiness is something like that okay it's and that's the reason why the angels have been singing holy, holy, holy for the ages. Right? Every time they move, they get a perspective and they, they can't say anything else but say, okay, he is holy. He is holy. He is holy. He is set apart. There is no one like him. His name is holy. We see that in scriptures. Scripture after scriptures. I can give you a lot of scriptures where it says that he is jealous for his name. Right, and he says, okay, uh, they did not honor my holy name. They did not honor my holy name. They did not honor my holy name. My name is holy. My name is holy. Holy is my name. He takes... So it is really just not an attribute. There is no other attribute that's repeated uh thrice like okay god is love 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 or you know you've heard this say before he's merciful 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 he's faithful 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 um he's god is good 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 no um but he's holy 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 is simply to say it's like uh in song of songs there's like you're fairer than ten thousand to my soul right it was so that number was the maximum in those days right? it's basically saying there is no one like you you are the fairest of 10,000, fairest of 10,000. So when we say that God is beautiful, we are again just saying that he is holy. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Right? When we say that, are you following what I'm saying? Yes? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> okay, um, this is really my desire is that our desire and you know the, the intention of this course is that that we encounter his holiness uh, there's a, a couple of book uh, books that i would recommend i'll recommend it to you guys uh, this one is the uh, one book is called uh, holiness of god by rc sproul he uh, holiness of god by rc sproul and uh, the pursuit of holiness by uh, Jerry Bridges, they're all, uh, you know, uh, worth reading and it's powerful and have had a huge impact on on me. R.C. Sproul, S-P-R-O-U-L. Um, the book is just called The Holiness of God. And the other book is The Pursuit of Holiness 
by Jerry Bridges. Like, okay. Are you all with me so far? Yeah. Uh, I just mentioned that <clears throat> I'll give you some scriptures about uh, his name being holy. You can make a note of it. Uh, Luke 1 49. Luke chapter 1, verse 49. You can, you, there you'll see that he mentions that holy is his name. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Right. Psalm 105, verse 3. Uh, glory in his holy name. Psalm 105, verse 3. Glory in his holy name. Let the her, uh, hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Um, you can read the long scriptures like uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 20 to 23. It talks about uh, how people did not honor his holy name. Ezekiel 36, verse 20 to 23. Okay, uh, one more scripture I'd like to read for us is in, is in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 43, verse 7. Ezekiel 43, 7. Okay, uh, it says, And he said to me, the Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. And the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name. The house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings nor by their whoring and by their dead bodies of their kings are their high places. Okay, that's from the ESV version. So he's saying, I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever, and they shall not defile my holy name. So God will dwell where his name is not defiled. Okay, God will dwell where his name is not defiled. What is his name? His name is holy, right? His name, uh, he will dwell where his name is hallowed. Um, the prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay, so let's look at those words. Our Father who art in heaven, that's a greeting, right? It's like our Father who art in heaven. The next part is, hallowed be your name. Okay, it's still continuing with the greeting. Your kingdom come is not a greeting. It's a prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So his kingdom, you know, kingdom is two words, king and dominion. His kingdom will not come where his name is not hallowed. Okay, his kingdom will not come where his name is not hallowed. Hallowed. That's where he dwells, right? Um, so his name is holy. Uh, he takes his name very seriously. <laughs> um, okay, all uh, you are all with me, isn't it? Okay. So the, and an encounter and a revelation uh, with his holiness will uh, push for a response that will draw us close to God. Um, and one of those encounters is Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6. You've read, I'm sure you've read those uh, verses. Okay, let's for the sake of uh, not to be over familiar with the scriptures, let's read it. Um, I hope that's okay with you guys. Sorry? Yeah. Okay, it says, it begins by saying, In the year the king, that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne high and exalted. Um, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Okay, let's stop right there. Uh, Isaiah is not just known as a major prophet by us now. because and We've divided the prophets as major and minors. Like, I, I, I wonder why, because it's like as if what they did was something minor. You know, what they did was major, like, you know. Um, like Jonah. Jonah's story, we've reduced it to a whale. And while the whole book of Jonah is not about the whale, 
it's about a city. The last verse of the book of Jonah says, should I not have compassion on this great city? It's about God's love for a city, right? You know, so Isaiah was known as the prophet of prophets. Isaiah was not one of those prophets who used to live in a cave in the wilderness. And Isaiah had access to the courts of the king uh, because King Uzziah was his uncle, was his cousin. It was related, okay? Uh, yeah, you could do that in character study, but it's not the no, okay? And he had access to the throne room. And you can see that in the language that is used there, right? Uh, and the train of his robe filled the temple. What does that mean? Now, you know, I say this, Bible was written uh, for us, but it was not written to us. Okay? And so because Isaiah had the access to the throne room of the kings, the train of the robe, right? The longer the robe, the, you know, means the greater the reign. That's how great their reign was. Right? So you've all seen a wedding gown, no? Like a robe that you know it goes on one kilometer long. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was, it's a royal palace wedding, royal wedding, you know. It's like, what? It's just going out into the roads also. So you know, 10 people have to carry it and go. So uh, so he's using the language of what he's seen and what he's seeing, and then he's using that to describe here, uh, saying, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted. But interestingly, it starts off by saying, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So it's very important that we understand that a lot of the things that we worship as kings need to die for us to see the Lord high and exalted. A lot of the things in our lives that we worship as kings, we've given the place of gods to things and people, and we worship them as kings. But all of the idols and all of that has to die for us to see the Lord high and exalted. And then he goes on to say, the train of his robe filled the temple. Uh, there's another translation that uses these words, and the train of his robe was filling the temple. So what's the major difference, filled and filling? Filled says it's done. Filling is present continuous, right? It's happening. So that means he's saying that there was no end for his reign, his sovereign, single reign. That's what sovereign means, OK? And so he's, he's seeing all of this uh, happening in the temple here. And above him were seraphs, each with six wings. Uh, with two, they cover their faces. With two, they cover their feet. And with two, they were flying. Uh, now, serafa means the burning ones. That means that they are on fire, these angels. Okay. Um, seraph means singular. Seraphim is plural. It's not seraphims. It's seraphim for plural. Okay. So seraph is singular. Seraphim is plural. Now, uh, here it says, above him were seraphs, each with six wings, with two. Now, we don't know how many seraphs were. He just says there were seraphs. In our head, we think there was only four. But for some reason, I, uh, maybe it's the connection with Revelation 4. But it says, um, but anyways, they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. So he is having this incredible encounter of God's holiness like never before. He is seeing these burning ones, the angels, like at the sound of their uh, their voices, the the threshold, the the doorpost was shaking. The whole earth is full is full of his glory. It says, and then after that encounter. His response, woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. 
How many of you have read the scripture before? Okay. Your sin is atoned for. That is a very powerful line. Why? Because in the Hebrews, we see that without the shedding of blood, there is no atonement for sin. Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. There are things about God we can't understand, we can't grasp and fathom. There's layers and layers and layers into who He is and what He's done and what He is doing. So uh, I have to teach about it. So <laughs> His holiness will give you a call to action, so to speak will tell you where you are in life right when when gazing on his holiness we kind of know okay your moral purity well, good luck your righteousness yeah okay now that you've seen who i am right um and then is that only then do you know how sinful we are and what he has saved you from Understood, right? Okay, let's move. Uh, I'm still with the introduction. Um, I'm just going to go through uh, some of the notes. Um, just follow along with me. Uh, this, some of the statements I'm reading because it's so well put. And I, <laughs> okay. It says, uh, living holy, being holy is embracing the fact that we are completely His. Okay, please highlight that. Living holy, being holy is embracing the fact that we are completely His. Right? Jatin said that set apart for God. Okay, set apart for God. We are not set apart for the sake of being set apart. Now, God tells the people of Israel in Exodus chapter 19, when he's bringing the people out of Egypt, he said, I brought you out of Egypt, not so you can just run wild like a headless chicken, you know, into the promised land. It's like, oh, I'm free, 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 you know. <laughs> you know? I brought you out of Egypt unto myself. Okay, so living holy, being holy is embracing the fact that we are completely His. We belong to Him. Every part of me belongs to the Most Holy One. Every part of me belongs to the Most Holy One. I'm just reminded of the scripture in Proverbs that we know so well. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And submit all your ways unto Him. Right? What does that mean? Submit all your ways is in my life. So just my as an example. So I'm a father. So there is a way of a father. I am a son. There's a way of a son, right? I'm a brother. So there's a certain way that I do. I'm a husband. There's a certain way that I live by. Um, I'm a teacher. There's a certain way that I have to follow. I'm a pastor. So there are, the scripture says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. That means, that's the beauty of it, right? And that's what this is saying. In every part of me belongs to the most holy one. It simply means, in all my ways, I acknowledge him. As a pastor, I acknowledge him. As a teacher, I acknowledge him. As a husband, I acknowledge him. As a father, as a son, as a brother, as a friend. Right? In all these aspects of life, I embrace Him. Right? Where I say, every part of me belongs to you, Lord. Okay? And I'll close this session with one last scripture in First Peter 1.16. Be holy, for I am holy. Again, that, uh, you know, for... for Many times I've heard people read that scripture as, be holy as I am holy. Be holy as I am holy is saying that, okay, 
yeah he says be holy for i am holy okay um because you are my people you are my chosen generation a holy nation a royal priesthood we have no choice Okay, so more about this. We'll continue learning about the holiness of God uh, in chapter one. Uh, we just finished the introduction, so let's uh, see how that goes. All right, we'll uh, stop for now and we'll continue. Thank you.